Emirates 24-7. Welcome back to Emirates 24-7. The UAE's demand for electricity is expected to double in less than 10 years. And it's clear that alternative energy solutions are needed. The region has significant oil reserves, but selling crude abroad is far more profitable than burning it for domestic energy use. Demand from the rapidly expanding economies of India and China has also provided huge potential for oil, with Saudi Arabia's oil exports to China topping one million barrels per day in 2009. A former OPEC official says this is a key factor in the UAE's decision to turn to nuclear power. I sat down with Justin Dargan, an energy specialist from Harvard University and a former OPEC advisor, to find out his thoughts on the feasibility of renewable energy. Well, renewable energy still is a bit uh, difficult uh, simply because uh, the cost of production is still a lot higher uh, than fossil fuels. So if you look at either utilizing oil for power production or natural gas. So renewable energy, to even make it competitive, it still needs an enormous amount of subsidies in order to even uh, get it uh, to the stage where you can where a large amount of power generation will be based off of that. Uh, so at this point in time, renewable energy, the push towards it is much more due to the, its environmental effects, uh, not necessarily due to the fact that it is a viable source of energy in the sense of competing with fossil fuels. If you look at the Gulf countries, due to the fact that the majority of their income is still based on the hydrocarbon sector, in if you burn that energy for domestic uh, power generation, then what will happen is you are burning up money to a certain degree. So the turn to renewable energy is helpful to that degree in the sense that uh, some of the Gulf countries feel that uh, it will lead to technology transfer. Uh, the Gulf could become a hub for, um, for advanced renewable energy technology so that uh, instead of just exporting energy to the West, uh, such as hydrocarbons or, or what have you, the Gulf could actually export technology uh, to the Western countries at the same time. Now, the UAE gets around 98% of its power from natural gas and is the world's fifth largest per proven uh, reserve of natural gas. Um, but we're also facing an energy shortage. Um, what's the cause? Actually, the cause may be uh, a good sign. Uh, and the way I can say it is because it's due to the fact that uh, the UAE has uh, really grew economically over the past 10 years. I mean, so we're looking at economic growth rates over the past decade from about 5 to 7 percent or so before the global financial crisis. I mean, so just uh, immense growth rates. And of course, any country that is growing as quickly as the UAE has, uh, the consumption of energy is going to increase as well. I mean, so that's one of the reasons why there's such a demand for natural gas. Um, but at the same time, uh, there hasn't been as much production uh, that um, has been able to keep up with these economic growth rates. So production is not kept up. So while there is immense reserves in the UAE, about 3% uh, of the global total, uh, investment within the natural gas uh, reserves and for production and so on is not kept pace. Now, the GCC countries are currently working towards a unified grid that will uh, reach across all of the countries. Um, do you think this is something that can really help to alleviate some of these energy concerns, or might it add an additional strain? I think uh, overall this is uh, quite a positive development on many fronts. I think it's a positive development in terms of uh, golf cooperation, uh, in terms of uh, golf economic cooperation. So I think there's going to be a spillover effect into other sectors, into the financial sectors, uh, into uh, various economic sectors, in terms of investment and what have you. And the UAE has also... Um, uh, projected or estimated that uh, once its nuclear power plants come online that these nuclear power plants could serve as the base for power export to other GCC countries in need. So right now Qatar is the only country that has really any additional power that it could uh, sell to its neighbors but uh, the UAE is actually looking at this project as a viable method to actually increase its foreign revenue uh, by being able to export power to its GCC neighbors by 2020 or 2021 when the nuclear power plants come online. How viable is nuclear to help take a little of that pressure off? Well, nuclear energy, particularly after Fukushima, has become a bit controversial, uh, although there is still a lot of push to develop nuclear energy uh, in the UAE. So if you look at economic viability, uh, you really have to look at the numbers uh, because uh, to a certain extent nuclear energy requires an enormous amount of subsidies, uh, but at the same time you'd be able to keep your... Uh, hydrocarbons for export, uh, so natural gas and also oil and so on. So when the price of uh, oil is extremely high as it is now, then you'd be able to increase your, uh, your, your revenue, your foreign revenue. Uh, however, in terms of um, other developments, if we look at nuclear energy and so on, it could 
uh, realistically be able to supply uh, a large amount of uh, domestic uh, UAE power needs uh, because uh, the plan is for the four nuclear plants to supply about a quarter of uh, the UAE's uh, power need. However, at the same time, there are still going to be other sources necessary in order to form a viable energy mix. So nuclear energy can definitely play a role as long as there are adequate safety measures in place. And I think that in light of Fukushima, I think that definitely uh, this is being reviewed at the moment to make certain that nothing like that will ever happen here. And uh, on the other hand, renewable energy is being looked at at the same time. So it's not necessarily one or the other. It's not necessarily are we going to depend fully upon natural gas or are we going to depend fully on nuclear energy or renewables. No, it's rather what the issue is, is forming a type of uh, dynamic and robust uh, energy mix. <music> That was Justin Dargan, an energy specialist from Harvard University. Well, what do you think? Can we meet these goals? What part are you playing in the renewable energy race? There are lots of ways to get in touch with us. You can email us at emirates24-7 at dmi.ae or send us a message via Facebook.